This is a little video tutorial to help you navigate your microscope in the microscope camera. Uh, a lot of students find that they thought using a microscope was quite easy, uh, and it can be. However, going into it realizing that you need to learn specific aspects of the microscope to use it most efficiently can go a long way so that it's not a frustrating experience and instead it's a rewarding one. So uh, on Blackboard, all of the documents for the microscope camera are posted. There's a lot of good tutorials, a lot of good information, proper care and maintenance. Uh, so what I'm going to do is briefly just kind of go through it hands-on, show you if we were in lab together how I would approach showing you how to do this. So basically what we've got here is we have a mirror on the bottom that the microscope comes with, but of course it also comes with this little light puck. And so we'll go ahead and remove this, we'll the light puck, and light it up. The placement of this you'll just get used to. If it was here, there's very little light coming through. If it's here, it's much better. If we can focus a little bit further down below and look here at the, the iris diaphragm. So moving this opens and closes the diaphragm, allowing more light to come through to where the slide will be or less light to come through where the slide will be. So it's a very important consideration. A lot of students automatically think that high light is the best. That's not true. For large organisms, high light is better. For small organisms like bacteria, low light is better. So get used to moving the iris diaphragm open and closed while you're looking through the microscope and that will help out a lot. So basically the microscope comes with three objectives. The 4x objective, the 10x objective, and the 40x objective. So if you're using the 40x objective, it's magnified 40 times. And if you look further up at the eyepiece, the eyepiece is 15x magnification. So the total magnification when you use the 40x objective and the 15x eyepiece is 40 times 15 equals 600 times magnification. So that's great. So uh, the 40x giving you 600 magnification is good for certain microbes like the big microbes, paramecium, amoeba, etc. When you're going to look at bacteria, you absolutely need the 100x objective. So that is why you purchased the 100x objective so that we could take it out and essentially replace one of these objectives right here. And what I'm going to do for the purpose of right now is I'm going to unscrew the 4x objective and I'm going to replace it with the 100x objective. And whether or not you can see that on the video or not, I don't know, but it does say oil. This is the only objective that you should use the oil on, which we will use. So I'll go ahead and screw it into the objective holder. So let's do some microscopy. So, your lab kit came with a variety of samples and posted on the course website is a document indicating for lab week three which microscope slides to look at and which objectives you are going to use. The microscope slides come with a letter E microscope slide. This is very nice because everybody knows what the letter E should look like. <laughs> and when you look at it under the microscope, what you'll see is that it is upside down and backwards. And that is so that you can get used to moving the sample around and knowing which way to move it. So we won't do the letter E. You should because it's easy to see. But what we're going to do is we're going to go right to one of the large microbes. And let's go with, for example, the... Oh, the paramecium conjugation. So paramecia are protists. They're quite large, easy to see with this microscope. Don't start looking at the bacteria right away because you may have a hard time finding it. So basically, we're going to go ahead and put this on the stage in the clips. And I'm going to start with the lowest magnification first. Since I removed the 4x objective to replace it with the 100x, 
I am going to put the 10x objective in place. A common error, which can be frustrating, is that the objective is slightly off kilter and when you're looking through the microscope you can't see anything. When you move the objective in place, it should click and maybe you can hear it. That click is what you want to hear. Not clicked, click. So, the position you want to start with, and what we have here is the coarse focus, and we have the fine focus. Look at your objective in relation to the slide and move your course focus all the way down to the lowest position. So it can go no further than that. It is all the way down. That's where you're going to want to start looking at. Then look inside your eyepiece up here while you slowly bring the course objective up. The other thing to consider is the placement of your slide. So if you look at the placement of your slide, you don't want the, the placement to be way over here, way over there. You want it to be somewhere in the middle to start with. So make sure that your slide's somewhere in the middle. Now when these slides are made, they're not going to be able to put everything right in the center of it. So you just need to kind of get used to looking through and looking in your field of view. And the field of view is what you're looking at when you're actually looking through the microscope. So again, use your course focus to bring it closest. Then what you want to do is look through the microscope bring your course, course focus up and when you start seeing things focused then move your slide using these knobs right here to move it in your XY fashion. So as I look under the microscope I essentially am looking for these paramecium. Now paramecium are big, they're going to be colored because they were stained and keep looking around. So aha, I just found some. And the reason, again, that I'm using paramecium is because they're very large, they're very easy to see. So when you're looking at under the microscope, again, the things to continue, can keep in mind are to uh, manipulate the diris, iris diaphragm below with the sliding lever that I showed you earlier. And this will allow more and less light in, so it makes it much easier to see. There we go. And so now what I'm going to do is go ahead and put in the microscope eyepiece camera and replace it with the 15X objective. So the software, TS View, I've already loaded onto this computer. And basically, what we need to do is we need to detect camera. So it's now going to look for whatever cameras are hooked up and we've got a support camera and we've got a USB video device or the integrated webcam. So for example, you could run your, your webcam through this, but that's not what we want to do. We'll choose USB video device. I have seen on other operating systems that the name of the camera can be something else. Basically just choose them and then hit start preview and look to see if it works. And so there we have the paramecium. Uh, if we move it around, right, X, Y, you can see that there's a lot of debris that's moving, right? And so when I was looking at it with just my eye, I was looking through that saying, okay, this looks like a lot of just debris, a lot of garbage, you know, and I kept moving it around, moving it around, essentially until just by chance, we found the paramecium. And so it's a little harder to do when you've got the microscope camera hooked up because what we're seeing on the screen is actually a smaller field of view than what we're seeing with our eye. So if you're like right now, you're like, well, geez, where'd the paramecium go? And you can't find them. Uh, what I suggest doing is saying, okay, I'm going to take the camera off. I'm going to look through the microscope again and move this around. And it should be quicker. Maybe not quick, but quicker nonetheless. There we go. So now I found them. Put the microscope camera back on and there they are once again. So again, if you can't find it through the camera, remove the camera, put the eyepiece back on and look at it from there. Now I told you originally to have the course objective all the way down. Okay, so that's what it would have looked like to begin with. Right, and so if you have it on there and you move the course objective slowly up, when you're moving the course objective, you can see that this is coming into focus, into focus, and there you have it. If you go too far, then you can lose it entirely. 
So if you don't happen to have paramecium in your field of view and instead, for example, you're right there and you start out and you're like, okay, I'm backing up, I'm backing up, I'm backing up. The fact that things came in very clear right there tells you that you're in good focus. But the question is whether or not your microbe is there. So that's when you need to move it around and look for it. So once you have an image that you, you like, I like that. Oh, I love looking at microbes. So it's beautiful. Look at this. These are two paramecium conjugating, essentially having sex. We've got cilia, which we can't see very well on this image. And then we've got the stained nuclei in the middle here. So the lab instructions say that you need a, an image of the paramecium at the 10x objective and the 40x objective. So since I've got it on 10x, what I'm going to do now is click to capture. We see the images down there. We can go open and edit. File, save as. We can then choose JPEG because those are very easy to import into a Word document. I'm going to save this as something descriptive, Paramecium 10x. And that will remind me what that was. And I will go ahead and save. Great. So now we've got one image at 10x. We also need to look at it at 40x so that we can see the level of detail that we're missing here, all this fine detail. So basically we need to go back to the capture window right here. And we're back in the live image mode. So if we go back to the microscope here, what we do is we, we move the nose piece so that now the 40x objective clicks into place. Now if your sample, your microbes were in the very center of the field of view, it should still be somewhere right around there. So the first thing I suggest is to go ahead and use the, the fine focus first. And so the fine focus, if you can see, Basically, it looks clear now. So I don't see my paramecium, but things look clear. So now I'm going to use my XY manipulators to then look for it, right? Just a little bit. And so if we see on the screen, when we're moving our XY, we've got this, this red blob coming through. Well, that's the paramecium. So we're going to move the XY stage. There we go. So that it's there. So again, we're using the XY manipulators down here so that the slide would bring the paramecium uh, into the middle. So now that we have it on the screen, I can use the fine focus to then get it nice and clear. Look at that. Look at that beautiful microbe. Mm. I could do this all day long. So what we have here is where they're joined. We've got again the nuclei, the nucleus of each one and we've got the cilia at higher resolution. And of course you could go up to 100x on this and see fine detail. You don't have to for this particular lab, but of course your curiosity will get the better of you, I'm sure, this semester. And you will be doing things above and beyond just because I'm sure that you will find this interesting. So once you have uh, that, like that right there, maybe, maybe this is the image that you want to go. It, doesn't, it, doesn't, it cuts it off a little bit, but I understand that. So all we need to do now is hit capture. It appeared down here. Click open and edit. And then we can go ahead, file, save as paramecium 40x. And change that to a JPEG file. Oops. And there we have it. So we can go back to the capture folder file over here. Or what you see up here is we have these little tabs. And so essentially we can go back and forth and look at our images. So right there we've just successfully taken an image at 10x of these conjugating paramecium and then we essentially looked at one of these really up close uh, to look at the fine level of detail. So the only difference between that and looking at other things is really just the other microbes will have different sizes, they will have different shapes, and so you will have to look for them in different ways. The uh, one thing that you should definitely take advantage of, although you need to know how to use the microscope, you do not have to go through all of the procedures every time. Since this is in focus for this particular slide, I can take the paramecium conjugation slide out and I can put another slide in without 
moving the, uh, the stage up and down or the objective. So let's see if this works. If I put it in, if we see that it is essentially close to being focused, right? So if we moved it back to the 10x objective, And let's see if we can, there seems to be something blurry right there. So we may have just by chance have a microbe there. So I'm going to use the fine focus on the microscope. And essentially there's nothing there. There's like these ghost things, which is part of microscopy. Again, the more we see here how it's not straightforward, the more perhaps comfortable you'll feel when you're doing it on your own and you're not finding things right away. Okay, so basically I'm going to move this around. Okay, so we have a lot of debris. Debris. Oh, here we go. So now what we're looking at is mycelium from the penicillium. So penicillium is the fungus that makes penicillin. Sometimes it grows on bread, forms that green color. But here it's stained. And so what I'm looking for specifically is an area that has some conidiophores. So basically just moving it around, again, I'm at a disadvantage because I'm not looking at it through the eyepiece. So it's a little harder to do uh, with this smaller field of view. So and again, it's somewhere on there. There we go. There we go. This is the mass. And so a lot of this, so this, this is good, right? A lot of this is good. What we're looking for for finer focus is now we're going to zoom in on this area. So that is the 10x. So if we look at the 40x objective, again, we'll just move the xy until something is there and then use the fine focus to bring the sample into focus. Maybe use the coarse focus if you need to. There we go. moving the puck around because I'm not happy with the amount of light that's going through. And what we're starting to see here, let's see with the 40X. There we go. We see here some beautiful structures. And so this right here is a conidiophore, which you'll read about in your readings. And each one of these little spheres, you can see there's a line of spheres. I'll use the cursor. There's a line of spheres here. There's lines of spheres here. Those are each conidia spores. This whole mass is the conidiophore. And what you'll see in the directions for the lab is I want to see an image of these. I want to make sure that you could. Uh, uh, identify by using the microscope that you've actually got all of these structures. So we've got a long mycelial mass going here and then it essentially culminates into this, this conidia spore. So again, this is the uh, 40X. So what we can do is we can go ahead and go over to the capture. Down here, open and edit and then file save as the same as before. So I'm not going to save this right now. I just wanted to show you uh, finding the larger microbes. Okay, so that's the basics of getting good images, being able to look at fairly large microbes using this microscope and then taking high quality images using the eyepiece camera. Bacteria are a lot smaller. If we look at this image as a gauge, most bacteria will be smaller than each one of these individual conidia spores. So you can see that the magnitude of what we're looking for is quite different. And so uh, it's harder. And so we'll, we'll go back to the capture window. And first what I'll do is uh, take the penicillium with conidia out. I will now put bacteria caucus form 
in. Okay, and if you look at the screen, there's something there. Okay, so the question is, is that what you're looking for? Well, the, the, the thing I just told you was that they're going to be smaller than, what, than the little dots here, so we know that these big things are clearly the wrong size. And you really need to use your judgment and your logic when you're looking at this. Size matters when you're doing microscopy on microbes. So I automatically know that these are not going to be microbes. So, so don't take an image of this and upload it as bacteria because that's clearly wrong. Okay, so what I'll do is I will use the, uh, the course focus and when I look at this, what this looks like is imperfections in the glass or a little bit of oil or something on it. Okay, so, so aha. So if we start seeing, see those little, little blue masses? Well, these are the microbes, okay? And so this is right now, I am using the 40X objective. So this is magnified uh, 400 times. And the reason it's not 600 times, like we explained before, is the, the camera only is 10X magnification. So, uh, so basically for the bacteria, as you will see in the instructions, you need to get an image at using the 40X objective and the 100X objective. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move it around to kind of give you a, an idea, right? The fact that there's a lot of that right there, that when I change the focus, see it's in a different focal plane. The bacteria are in one focal plane, but you can see these kind of ghost images all over the place. Those ghost images are those artifacts that are in a different focal plane, so we still see it. And that really does not make for good images. So if we pull it back, we want to get rid of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt, maybe we can take the slide out. We can use lens paper. And so the lens paper is the only paper, tissue, cloth, etc., that you should use on your optics of the microscope. And so I'm also going to use one of these to wipe off the slide. Because I've used this slide before, so it has some old oil on it, I'm sure. Okay. So if we look back at the screen then, and I change the course focus up and down, what we see is that there's the bacteria, and now once we have it in coarse focus to that point, what I'm going to use now is the fine focus. To, ah, beautiful. Oh, look at those microbes. And what you'll see is we don't have those ghost images anymore. So again, the reason we're doing this tutorial right now is to show you all these little things that can come up which can be maddening when you're first starting to use it. So if you see those ghost images, clean them off. That's, that's the bottom line there. So we need an image at, at, with the 40X objective and I'm, I'm basically going back and forth with my fine adjustment so that I can get what I think is the most crisp, clear image there is. So that looks really good to me. And so what I'm going to do is, uh, as we did before, I'm gonna capture it. I can then open and edit, and then there it is. And I can file save as, if I wanna look at it more, I can zoom in, right? So those little dots are the microbes. So they're still fairly unimpressive because you really can't tell what's going on. It's just a bunch of little blue things all over the place. So if we go back to the capture window, and always remember to go back to the, the window that you want, right? So now we're gonna change this to the 100X objective, so. Okay, so once we have that, I will slowly use the fine focus. If you go one way for quite a while and it doesn't come into focus, move the focus the other way. If it still doesn't come into focus, use your course knob until you get a nice image. There we go. Okay, so hopefully what you'll see is that the blue dots are bigger, but they're, well, they're, they're kind of fuzzy, aren't they? They're, there's not clear resolution. And so the question is, why is it so blurry? Is it just as good as we're gonna get? The answer is no. So from your reading, you should know what to do next. Everybody at the count of three, say what it is. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, it's the oil. 
right? So that's what this oil is. The immersion oil, uh, as you'll see in your reading, increases the resolution by essentially uh, collating the light and putting it through your sample. So basically what we need to do is, uh, and just for the sake of comparison, why don't I take an image, I'll get this in the, the best focus that I can, which appears to be right around there. I'm going to go ahead and take a, a, a capture of that. All right. And then what I'm going to do is, if we look at the microscope again, move the objective out of the way. Take the oil. Put a one drop. Slide the 100x objective directly into the oil. And then if we look at the screen again, what we have is a more clear sample. So, there we go. And so one thing you'll also see is that some areas may be in, in fairly decent focus like that and other areas are not. And that's just, that's just the way it is sometimes. So for example, after you take an image, you don't end up use the whole image. You could, for example, just crop that part right there and use that in your report if you wanted to. Now the thing about this slide that is uh, unfortunate is this slide is labeled bacteria caucus form. What I'm looking at is not caucus. I have communicated this with the company. These are more of a coccobacillus because if you look at them, they're more elliptical. They're not straight up circular. Okay, so that's where uh, you'll see in the lab directions, you need to confirm whether or not what the slide says should be there looks that way to you. So you need to use your investigative powers as your scientist hat on and uh, say, yes, I think this is caucus form or this is uh, consistent with caucus form. If you had this slide, you would say, this slide is not consistent with caucus form. It is more of a, in between a caucus or a rod or an elliptical or a football. You will see in the sample report and the sample, uh, the lab report guidelines, uh, I encourage you to use both a mix of technical language, you absolutely need the technical language, but also use some of your, your, you know, your regular words, just uh, street words, right? Like calling that a football shape is totally fine in the context of this class. Now, do you need to know what bacillus and caucus and coccobacillus is? Yes. Uh, so anyway, that's how you get a crisp, clear image at 100x. And if we, uh, for example, take the bacteria caucus form slide out, and we slide in the bacteria bacillus form, it should be close to the proper, magnif proper focus. And so what we see here is with very little manipulation, right? Automatically, look at that, I've got bacteria there. And from your readings, you should look at that and you should say, oh yeah, that looks like bacillus to me because a bacillus is a rod form. And so each one of these are rod bacteria. Okay, and so this is the kind of the key thing. Don't confuse these other things with bacteria. You need to know what you're looking for and have an idea of how it looks like. So if you say bacillus, look at your reading, look to do what's expected. Heck, do a Google image search for bacillus bacteria and get an idea. Now you need to find that in your image. And so right here, it's a little bit on the blurry side. So what I'm gonna do is put on the immersion oil, one drop. Slide the oil immersion lens directly into it so it clicks. Use the fine focus. And what we see is that some of these images, uh, some of these bacteria are quite easy to see. So all of these little rods are bacteria. And so this right here is a single bacterium. This is a single bacterium. This looks like it's a bacterium that's starting to divide. Uh, then you would take a picture of that, save it, and you're good to go. So that is now using the oil immersion lens. Next I will show you how to clean the microscope. Okay, so when you're done using the microscope, obviously you want to remove the camera. 
put its cap on, put the 15X eyepiece on, turn off the light. And what you want to do is you want to bring the objectives all the way up, out of the way. Take your slide off. And the first thing I always do is I take the lens paper and I'll double it over. And you want to push up on the oil immersion lens. So if you listen, maybe you'll hear it. So it actually goes up into the housing. That's to protect it so that you don't ram the, opt the optics into the slide. So when I wipe it off, you can see all the oil that's on there. So I'll use a new piece, pull it up, and basically I'll keep using new pieces of the paper until I'm convinced there's no more oil on it. You know, when I teach this in person, students seem to think they've got it clean, but then I come along with my lens paper and magically find some oil still there. This is your microscope, right? So, um, you know, if you sell it back, it needs to be in fine working order. And if you keep it for science fairs to show people cool things, you want to make sure it's in, in good repair. So once that's cleaned off, um, the other thing you want to do is you want to clean the oil off of your microscope slide. And really, you're just smearing it off with the lens paper. That's all. When you use one up, grab a fresh one. And look at it, make sure there's no smears on it. And then it's ready to store back in the box. If you get any oil on your uh, stage here, just ball up some lens paper and clean it off. Otherwise, what works really well for the stage for oil is Windex, ethanol, etc. However, very important, do not get Windex or ethanol on the objectives. And the other thing that you should do, since you're going to start this for the first time, is take a fresh lens paper and check your other objectives. Now, you should not have put immersion oil on the 40X or the 10X, but sometimes you do end up getting it in there. And the 100X objective is built to have immersion oil on it. The other objectives are not, and they will be destroyed pretty quickly. And if you leave oil on your 100X oil immersion lens for long enough, it will also degrade your optics and then you'll get really crummy images and the purpose of buying the 100x oil immersion objective essentially goes away. So once you're done with that, uh, you always want to keep in mind uh, the, the microscope came with a little hood. You want to put the hood over it to make sure that dust does not get all over the optics. And of course, there's a lot of information in the, the books that came with the microscope and they are loaded on Blackboard. So make sure you go through those, right? This is just uh, some things that I've seen people have issues with. I wanted to show you firsthand uh, how to do it. So happy microscoping.